Good morning, everybody, and thank you for tuning in. Uh, this morning it is, uh, what is that, December 1st, 8.57 a.m. Uh, we are here, that, I've been up since uh, like five o'clock this morning. We had a bunch of equipment moves that we needed to attend to this morning. I didn't bring the cameras on those because I honestly forgot them. Uh, but this morning what we got going is we have this RV here. This RV I loaded last night um, at probably like 6 or 7 o'clock last night and the only truck available at the time was this truck here and we brought it back here to the yard. The customer was on the side of the road, been stranded there for like three days. His insurance basically wouldn't pony up the money to uh, pay so they just kept price shopping, price shopping, price shopping until they came upon us. Basically we were their last ditch effort uh, and it sucks that this guy basically had to sit on the side of the road at the expense of his time that's unfortunate but anyway we have the rv here now loaded onto our truck as you guys can see this is over height so i just ordered a over height permit with the permit company so that's going to issue us a permit for 15 foot 5 inches which is what we measured it at and that will uh, give us a permitted route to san bernino which is where this unit needs to go because it has some sort of transmission problem. So that is what we got going on here. Um, but the only problem is that I have another job that I need to do with this particular truck and trailer tomorrow. So what we're gonna do is offload this unit and reload it onto this trailer. And once we get it on this trailer, we'll chain it down and it'll be ready to use uh, tomorrow morning once the permit gets issued hopefully tomorrow morning, but that is what we're gonna do and Then once we do that we are gonna start prepping for Our next move which is going to be the Alpod you guys have seen me move the Alpod before it's that big like modular house structure I'll put some links and uh, cards up in the top to uh, let you guys check that out We've lifted it a lot but uh, in this particular instance, someone bought the Alpod and we are going to be transporting it to LA. So we are gonna be meeting Jim from White Steel. You guys have seen him on some jobs before. He's gonna be lifting the Alpod with his crane because it's not an accessible spot for the rotator. We're gonna load it onto the black two axle this morning and preload it, get it staged here at the yard and then get it all prepped for tomorrow morning when we take it to LA tomorrow morning. So that's what we got going on this morning. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for uh, tuning in to the mayhem. We'll take you along for the ride, show you what a, another day in the life of my life in uh, this business. So thanks for tuning in, guys. So what we're doing right now is playing a little bit of musical uh, truck and trailer. Tommy is getting rid of the white Peterbilt. We're gonna put the Cascadia under here because that's the combination that we ordered the permit for. For the axle spacings and all that and once we do that we'll get this swapped over there with the pto power from the cascadia i'm gonna go ahead and start this truck up get that running so the airbags are like completely deflated right now this thing believe it or not i don't know you guys have probably seen us load some RVs before. Most of the time what we gotta do is, most of the time what we gotta do is put a piece of wood, two, sometimes two, depending on how low this sits, uh, so that when we drive it up or winch it up, the back end doesn't hit the ground. In this particular instance, this RV sat so high that I didn't even have to do that, which is pretty impressive. I mean, I'd say like 95% of the RVs that we move require to be blocked. So pretty impressive. Right now, like I said, the bags are down, so everything's kind of loose. And so we're gonna start pulling at least the back chains off. This side, the bags are up still, so it must have a leak on the passenger side, of it, or the driver's side, excuse me. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do, let's turn the PTO on.
notice how high I have to go with this to get it so it doesn't pop up here. Did that I'm just gonna take the winch I'm gonna tighten that up snug it up to release the brakes we just have to put air to it and we're also raising the airbags up all the way as well that helps a lot these trucks the landals have a little air air valve under the axles that we use not in the field but since we're here this high capacity air compressor works a lot better the landal has a little port down there but like i said this this works a lot better brakes release all right It should be. You want to take a. You want to put a second eye on it. Let me get out of the way. That that looks pretty. Yeah. Pretty scary. The air compressor must be putting out more pressure than the dryer wants. basically bridge the gap to get it to come up. This one, in, like you guys can see, sits a lot higher than the rest, which is awesome for us. All right, well, that's good to know then for, you know, whoever takes this, probably you, honestly, but you know, you don't, you won't have to block it, given you're on flat ground. You know. Hey, Mark, you wanna see if the brakes work? Okay, I think we'll undo it here. That way we can run it off without you getting stuck on the, yeah, you with that? Okay. Yeah. All right, Mike, you're good. Let it roll, let it roll. That's good. Cool. Uh, okay, now time to move this truck out of the way so Tommy can get the white heater or sorry white trailer and Cascadia in front of it so we can re-winch it onto that trailer so. not gonna lie I just put my foot down to hit the clutch there is none in this automatic yeah that white trailer looks good behind the Cascadia I think that's gonna be its permanent home the white Peterbilt as we refer to it or the Panda well we've had it forever it's proven to be relatively impractical compared to the rest of the trucks because of how big the sleeper is and the wheelbase. So it's a great truck, don't get me wrong, but for the things that we have been doing and continue to do, 
RVs and equipment and tight spots. It's not the most practical unit. So that's why we are transitioning to day cabs. I'm gonna park this right here for now. Oh yeah, she's still clean. Love that truck. This will actually be the first time that we use the winch with the new tensioner. So I'm curious to see how it spools up and how it reacts when we free spool it. Because in the past with that bent tensioner, which we didn't even know was bent at the time, we just knew we had some sort of problem. Uh, when we pulled out the cable on a free spool that it would just get so rat nested really quickly. And it, it makes sense. The tensioner wasn't even touching the cable at the time. So hopefully it works out. So just for future reference, this cable might be like 10 feet shorter than the rest because it's almost to the last, like, it's no, uh, the last okay. full wrap. That's all the question to change. <laughs> I see the wheel. Yeah, I didn't realize it. I think it's because we cut this down a few times because of it's undone itself. This one's already down to like the last wrap. Oh. Like last full wrap, so it might be like five feet shorter than the rest. Yeah, make sure you go under the axle and come over so that the, it's as low as it can be, you know? That makes sense? What's up? Uh, in the middle. Over and under? No, under, over. So come from the bottom of the axle and go over the top. Feather the brake a little bit, Mark.
right, two chains on the front. Tommy's working on the two on the back. Once we get that all chained up, we'll go ahead and level her out. quick little cable re-spooling of this cable and we're gonna stow it as far up as possible because like I said I'm going to get that owl pod it's gonna take up the majority of this deck space so I'd rather just get it up and out of the way because it won't be needed so Tommy's bringing the golf cart over here which is kind of our re-spooling machine for at least the light stuff and we'll go ahead and re-spool this cable and get it all stowed away all right I'm just gonna power it out so So because we had limited uh, options on where we could hook that axle with that RV, it kind of bunched up on one side as you guys can see. So we're going to go ahead and fix that and go past it and then we'll come back in. That's how we like it. All right, so now what we're gonna do is inside the white trailer, I outfitted it with 10 brand new uh, ratchet straps, load straps. And what we're gonna do is take some of those out and steal them for this load. The only, only reason that I'm gonna do that is because the majority of our straps are relatively greasy and oily from just the nature of our business. Uh, and a customer just purchased this brand new Alpod, so we wanna try to preserve it as best as possible. So I'm opting to use the brand new straps that have no oil no grease that way we don't leave any marks or marring on the side of the uh, unit as it goes down to la so that is the plan i'm gonna grab a milk crate and just start feeding some straps into there into there so that way we have them and they're separate so i can put them back into the uh, white trailer once i'm done how many we got in there one, two, four. I think six should be okay. All right, guys, we are here uh, in Indio. Tommy went on a quick lunch break, and like literally, like a few minutes later, a call came in for a Isuzu landscaping truck with like a little uh, crane that they used to pick up bags of uh, you know material that they picked up. And that came in. I guess it does run. It just has some sort of regen issue. So. We are going to be towing that unit to Fontana. Since Tommy went on lunch and I was free at the time, I'm going to be uh, loading this up for him and get it preloaded back to the yard. So once he gets back from lunch, it'll be ready to go and it's going to be going to Fontana. So we just got here on scene with it. Uh, let's go ahead and head in there and see what we got. So these little narrow wheelbase trucks are so easy to get off center on the trailer. Not like you're gonna fall off, but like to where you're off to one side very aggressively. So what I like to do is take it up to where I think is relatively center. So let's say right there in line with that second inner board, the middle board, and then I'll compare, compare sides. See where I'm at over here. Hey, look at that. That was a good guess. So here I'm on, and then same thing over here. So that's how I do that. All right, on this, I'll probably just go to the axle on this one. Also, a reason we bought this trailer, or brought this trailer, as opposed to the other ones, this trailer, while the winch is there, it doesn't work very well. It's just kind of our dedicated equipment, non-winch trailer that we use. So, considering this ran, we knew the winch wouldn't be needed, so we opted to use this trailer. I'm gonna. Love 
level the deck out. That way it's just a little easier to work with. All right, four chains, height is more than good. Normally if this was like on a Freightliner or an international chassis, that would be something to consider as height, but this one is clearly lower than the bubble top on the white Peterbilt, so we're okay. Nice and straight. We're good to go. Let's go ahead and get this back to the yard, dump some fuel in it, and by that time Tommy should be done with lunch and ready to take it. Front row service. <laughs> This is valet service for you. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. Hookup included. This is the uh, beautiful thing about a Landol. You can suck the axles up in tight spots to get around corners. So we're here with uh, Jim from White's Crane Service. We're gonna be lifting the Alpod. We brought this in here with the rotator. You guys have seen us lift this with the rotator, but with its current uh, state and where it sits, we can't lift it with the rotator because we don't have enough reach to get it. So. We uh, contracted Jim, and we're gonna go ahead and uh, use him to lift it onto us and load us some. Yeah. Now, the only thing you have to consider when you pull your axles in is the tail. Just be very mindful of that. All right, we made it past the corner. I'm gonna go ahead and get in here and get in here and we'll see what see what's gonna happen next year. I want one so bad. One day. That's gotta weigh like 400 pounds. Oh, that'd be. It's just down the street here and then we'll flag it, sign it, and get it all prepped for tomorrow. That is the Alpod move. So as of right now, we are back at the yard. As you guys saw, we got it fueled up. We got it flagged, signed, so it's all prepped for tomorrow morning. I'm probably just gonna give the truck a quick wipe down since we just went through the dirt, get it all clean and looking fresh and on point for our trip to LA. Can't, can't go out of town without looking, with looking like this. Some of you guys are like, oh my gosh, that truck is clean enough for me well not for me anyway um, so tomorrow the game plan is I still got to do a little uh, route surveillance 
route serving, however you want to call it. Uh, but in LA, there's what's called a curfew. And uh, this curfew restricts travel over 10 foot, six inch, or over 10 feet, actually. Travel over 10 feet, which this one is 10 foot, six inches. Restricts travel over 10 feet between, I believe, six and 10. It's been a while since we've done a curfew load. Uh, and so if that is the case, then we will either have to leave super early or late or a, re a relatively like normal time and get up there past the curfew. So I got to do a little uh, route planning just to see how that's going to work up. The dimensions on this are 10, six wide. Uh, it's like 38 feet long and 13, seven tall loaded. As you guys saw, we got three straps on this side, three straps on the other side. There's a little lifting eyes up there that we're hooked into. So they're all independent. Tomorrow is going to be exciting and it's going to be a totally different video. So you guys are going to have to tune back in for that. But we are meeting up with Van Lingen Towing. You guys have seen them. You guys have heard of them. We're good uh, friends with them. You know, we're very respectable to each other. We are essentially, we work together. We're not like other tow companies. We like to work with other tow companies. I I never understood that growing up in this industry when tow companies like hate each other. Like I would love to work with every single one of the tow companies in the valley. Some choose to do that, some choose to not. It's just, that's what it is. Van Lingen is not one of them though. They are one of our buddies, one of our friends. We do jobs with them. So uh, we have the pleasure of working with them tomorrow. They are gonna be lifting this off. Some of you guys might ask why the rotator wasn't used, our rotator wasn't used to lift this off. That's because as you guys saw, the working conditions would not allow for a, uh, a pick of that nature with the limited reach of the rotator. As you guys saw, the cr crane had to set up, pick it, swing it around the corner, probably at like a 35, 40 foot radius, which the rotator just does not have. So that's why we chose to pair up with White's crane. Again, another competitor, but another friend of ours that we do business with. So pretty excited about that. Like I said, I got to do some route planning, but uh, I think that's probably going to end the day for now. I think I got, I took you guys along for a pretty good day in the life of Trent Jr. today. Um, so thanks for tuning in guys. Uh, you guys, like I said, you guys are going to have to tune in to tomorrow's video or the next video uh, to be able to see the rest of this job. If you uh, are interested, please, either check back in a week from now from when this video is posted if you're watching it the day it was posted or you know just it, when the video will be posted i'll have a link in the description or a card as well where you guys can check out the next iteration of this video and the continuance of the delivery of this unit so with that being said hope you guys did enjoy the video as always like comment subscribe thank you for watching let me know in the comments what you thought about the video and we will see you on the next one thanks for watching